One of the problems that modern crystal set builders encounter sometimes is finding a germanium diode. It's fine if you've got old radios you can pull apart, but if you don't, they are increasingly rare. And some sold as germanium diodes may not actually be genuine. Now, you could try a silicon diode, but the problem with that is that its turn on voltage is higher, 0.6 of a volt rather than 0.2 or 0.3. So, unless signals are very strong, it won't perform well in a crystal set. Now, one way you can get around that is to put some DC bias on it using a battery and a variable resistor. But for a crystal set purist who wants a self powered radio, then much of the joy of building a crystal set and using it completely powered by the incoming signal is lost. I was doing some reading and that same problem, slightly different, was actually encountered in the 1920s. Not only that, but the solution was described. Back then, the common type of crystal set detector was a Galena crystal that had a cat's risker and it was very volatile. If you bumped the table, then you lost the spot and it was difficult finding the station back again. So definitely not as good as the germanium diodes that later came along. Now one alternative was a carborundum detector. Problem with that was that it was stable, but it was insensitive. You actually needed a battery possibly a variable resistor to alter the current uh, for the bias and then it would work but again the appeal of the crystal set being self-powered was lost so how did you get around that well there is a very interesting article in a publication called chums annual crystal set um, I think chums magazine might have been a more broadly oriented teenagers or youth um, magazine. Anyway, they brought out in 1927-1928 Chum's annual crystal sets. So maybe it was columns from the magazine. Anyway, full of crystal set information. And the first article was the, an article describing the issue with the uh, carborundum and uh, galena that I just mentioned before. And the way that they got around it, they were able to use a carborundum detector by having not one, but two earths. Now the reason for the two earths was that if you had two stakes of dissimilar metal, then you'd have a potential difference between them. And that could provide a voltage suitable for the bias that a carborundum detector would need. So I thought 100 years later, nearly 100 years later, maybe we could use that same solution for a silicon diode. If it worked, I would have a crystal set that used a silicon diode, yet had no external battery and was completely self-powered. So, here I am in my garden. It's a summer's day as you can probably tell from what I'm wearing, but anyway, the ground isn't all that wet. Um, maybe very slightly damp underneath, but we haven't had rain for a while. So, I've just stuck some different bits of metal in the ground. The Chums Wireless Club article said that one earth had to be galvanized iron and the other had to be a copper rod now i don't have certainly don't have a copper rod so i'm just trying various metals i've got the multimeter something that a lot of experimenters probably didn't have in 1927 and i'll just measure the voltage between these various bits of metal stuck in the ground and see if i can have something that's might be workable. Like if, if I got half a volt or one volt, that would be probably enough for the silicon diode. Before I go on with what I did, let's just recap the Chum design. 
from the 1927-28 Chum Annual Crystal Set Book. We've got a coil here. I gather they only had one station. It was at Daventry and it was about 80 miles away, but I'm guessing pretty powerful. So I don't think selectivity was much of an issue. So they've just got a coil, uh, no variable capacitor, but ju just a coil that you vary the inductance and it would broadly tune in the station. And we've got an antenna connected to the top of the coil, so pretty crude as far as antenna coupling goes. Here's the detector, the familiar diode symbol, and the headphones. It would have been 2000 or 4000 ohm headphones, and so no need for a capacitor or resistor across them. But the important thing is that they were connected to two different earths, and the earth stakes were separated by about six inches. So that one was galvanized iron, that one was copper. And the potential difference between these was able to overcome the issues with the diode and its turn on voltage. So in this case, the carborundum detector worked. Apparently it wasn't super sensitive on weak signals, but on signals that are reasonably strong, it was fine. It was as good as the Galena detector, according to the Chums book. This looks like a bit of a crime scene, but anyway, I've got various bits of metal stuck in the ground. Uh, this is aluminium. This is a garden trowel, some old scissors and a screwdriver. This is probably stuck in maybe 20 centimetres in. These maybe 10 centimeters or so into the ground and as you might be able to visualize it is fairly dry a uh, little bit moist further in but later on i'll get a bucket of water and we'll see if there's any difference i'm guessing it wouldn't change the voltage but it might change the current but complete guess here I've just got one clip on the aluminium, one on the scissors, and if we look at the voltage, it's jumping around a bit, but around 0.4, 0 0.5 of a volt. So that's encouraging. I'll just clip uh, between, I'll just clip onto the screwdriver there, and the scissors much lower, less than 0.1, maybe about 0.1. Uh, between the scissors and the trowel, even less, 0.05, but the polarity has changed. Uh, we'll go back to the aluminium and even more negative but 0.57 so we'll just we'll just swap this around um, the red lead i've got goes to the positive there black lead negative okay so what we're finding is we're getting almost 0.6 of a volt which is pretty good um, that, that might make a difference, I think, with the silicon diode. Here are some bits and pieces. Coil, variable capacitor, headphones. They are only 600 ohm, but they do work very well. I've had success with other crystal sets. Um, bits and pieces, silicon germanium diodes. And this wire here goes off to yeah, it does go along the ground, but it does eventually end up here as part of my antenna. I just don't like the idea of an antenna wire drooping along the earth. Might be a bit of capacitance, so I won't lift it all off, but I'll just um, chuck a bit of it over the timber fence, so a bit less capacitance. That might improve the signal. Yep, that's better. Hardly any of it now on the ground. What I'll first do 
is build something as close as I can get it to the original circuit. Uh, it was described by 5YM. Uh, 5YM visited another guy who wasn't mentioned in the article. 5YM took some notes and described the crystal set with a carborundum detector that I will now demonstrate in a slightly more modern form using a silicon diode instead of a germanium diode. It's not going to be selective but at this point of the experiment that doesn't matter. If I can hear a signal at reasonable volume that is a win and means that you can do other things later on to separate stations if you need to. As for the coil it's not going to be very critical. It's pretty big. Maybe there's possibly a hundred turns on it and about five centimeters in diameter. I do have a lot of taps so for this experiment it will be fine. Well first of all try a silicon diode 1N4148. You can't hear it but I am getting a signal. It's a station about five kilowatts about 15 kilometers from here on 1377. It is at quite listenable volume. Just for the purposes of this video I've removed the headphones, I've replaced them with a 47k resistor to provide a load and I've connected an audio amplifier. So I'm getting it on the speaker okay. I've got the wire tapped to the end of the coil. I'll just tap up a bit more see if there are any changes in volume. It's a bit quieter there. That's better. But there's really not a lot of difference for most of the coil. I might try variable capacitor later. But the important thing is that I'm using a 1N4148 silicon diode. It's working as a detector in a crystal set and it's without external battery power. I'm just relying on, well, I suppose this is a crude battery. What I'm getting in the potential difference between the aluminium here and the trowel here. Now I've got the multimeter on and it's 0.36 volt. Yeah, it's negative because I've got the probes the wrong way around. The aluminium is actually negative. How do we actually prove that this works? Well, in a normal crystal set, if you swap the direction of the diode, it shouldn't make any difference. But in this one, because of the assistance we're getting from the battery we've made, there should be a difference. Let's give it a shot. And with the diode reversed, no sound at all from the speaker. I've put the diode back to when it was working. Next experiment we'll do is to make this a single earth crystal set. So we'll just remove that earth and connect the headphones back up to here and see if that changes the result. So there will now be no potential difference and we're just using the silicon diode as a detector without the bias voltage. Uh, that's pretty simple. We'll just connect that over to this. And you can hear a signal. In fact you can hear more than one signal. But it's distorted. Uh, it's really not working very well at all. 
So we'll just connect the power again. And definitely a big difference. Next thing is we'll go back to the single earth and we'll put in this germanium diode. And with the germanium diode in, yeah, the germanium diode is working very well without the need for the bias from the two earths. And if anything, it's stronger than the silicon diode with the bias. So the difference isn't that much. We'll just put the bias on the germanium diode and see what happens. That's interesting. It silences, it mutes it completely. Just to demonstrate what I said before about the silicon diode being polarized when I was using the bias, I've just reversed the germanium diode with no bias. It works as well as it did before. But we'll just put on the bias and we're getting signals, but not as strong as with no bias. Whereas the silicon diode was the other way around. The Chums book did say that you should keep the ground moist when using this receiver with the bias and the carborundum detector, or in our case, the silicon diode. So, got out the watering can and let's see if it makes a difference. Before we moisten, let's check the current. Maximum of 50 microamp. I've got the meter just in series with the connections. In fact, everything is in series here. Um, you've got the battery, very crude battery, then the meter, then the headphones, then the coil, then the diode. So yeah, all in a series circuit. We are getting, optimistically, three or four microamps. Well, the water doesn't seem to be sinking in very much. I think that's getting stronger, you know. And looking at the meter, we are up to six microamp. I don't know if it drops off if it gets too wet, but we'll keep pouring. Now I've got some salt and I've got some vinegar. Not sure which or both, but they'll react with each other, I think. Anyway. Hello, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. What are you up to? Oh, just doing some uh, radio experiments. Nice. I think the salt might have done something good. It's now slightly over six, maybe even seven. I think it's nearly eight with the vinegar. I've moistened the earth and that might have changed the performance even on the germanium diode. Anyway, I've now 
gone back to the single earth with the germanium diode and oddly that's only giving me two microamp but then when I go to the um, bias with the germanium diode I'm now up to 12 microamp now I've gone back to the silicon diode and since I've put in the salt and the vinegar just checking the voltage and 0.54 of a volt I'll just disconnect the crystal set and hardly any difference so that possibly means that there's now sufficient current for the crystal set and it's not loading this down very much next experimenting with a variable capacitor I've just got it in series with the antenna and there is a pronounced peak above a certain amount of capacitance but it's still very broad and I can't select other stations properly apart from 3MP and if I tap it a bit further down there's a bit more from another station but still not easily separated I'm using a more conventional crystal set circuit with a normal parallel tuned circuit and that definitely allows me to separate stations a bit better not perfect That one sounds like Radio National down on 621. Here's the ABC 774. Some other stations up here. There's 3MP. That's our reference station and looking at it on the meter it is over eight maybe eight and a half now it's nine so definitely a little bit better with a variable capacitor than before when I had it now just go down to the other stations there's the ABC nearly six I just realized something I was doing my current measurements with this 47k resistor my headphones as you can see here is 600 ohm only one side's working so yeah one lots of 600 ohm when I look at the meter I'm getting 40 microamps back on the single earth and it's less than two microamps so here's the circuit I've come up with I am using a variable capacitor I can select stations silicon diode 1 in 4148 aluminium is the negative earth the positive earth is whatever trowels are ma made of anyway that's giving a potential difference of around half a volt and that's enough to help with this 1 in 4148 diode to detect AM broadcast stations I'm not going to make any great claims about the crystal set it's certainly not the most selective that I've built in some cases you if you tap the diode down the coil a bit then that might give you a bit of 
extra selectivity. I'd say a crystal diode is probably still better, but if you don't have one of those, then this arrangement with a silicon diode allows you to build a true crystal set, no batteries, and have free power radio, provided you keep watering the earth. Roger, roger. You are 5.9 and running 5 watts. 5 watts QRP. Over. Okay, great job for 5 watts and uh, 72 seconds for the call. Thank you. No QRP. Pussy about QRP. Right, it was great to work. Pussy about QRP. Dean Pussy about 5 watts. I am QRP 5 watts. 73. 